Good morning. This is the Ramblings of an Dispel Mind podcast for Wednesday, November 16th, 2016. So last night the wife and I went to Texas Roadhouse to get some steak. And I was thinking about that this morning. And I thought I'd kind of share my tumultuous, 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 none of those are right. You know what I'm trying to say. Um, Relationship with beef. Growing up, we had a lot of beef. Because my dad had stomach ailments and, you know, beef was one of the few things that he could, he could, he could stomach. Uh, that wouldn't give him lots of problems with his, I don't know if he had ulcers, but he was constantly having stomach pain. I think most of it was really due to stress, but that's another story. So we ate a lot of beef. So we had hamburgers and an occasional steak and roast was a fairly frequent thing. And the problem is, neither one of them knew how to cook it. <laughs> I don't think. Uh, I don't remember, I remember, well, I don't remember hamburgers being horrible, but you know, steaks were always well done and, and tough. And roasts were always well done and tough. And, you know, I just, when you're in that that phase of your childhood where you're getting the, you will clean your plate, you know, or you're not getting up from the table until you do clean your plate. Um, You know, there are limits to how long you really want to be sitting there chewing a bite of roast. And, and I pass that limit many times, let me tell you. And it's not pleasant. Because after a while, it just kind of, kind of turns into this vaguely beef-flavored paste in your mouth that's in a lump so big you can't swallow it. Mm, sounds appetizing, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I really, I came away, I came away from that experience as an adult going, you know, I don't like roast. I don't like steak. And I would, as, as, as I became an adult, I would avoid those two meals. And if I was going to a house where they were serving them, I would just kind of grip my teeth and, and bear it. But then I married my wife who loves steak and who loves roast. And so then I I eventually learned, it it was a quicker transition for steak than it was for roast. But I I, I began to learn that it wasn't the meat that I disliked, because I always liked hamburgers. and I don't remember if, if Dad did those on the grill until they were crispy or not. I don't recall, but I always ate hamburgers. Um, you know, so it wasn't, it wasn't the meat that I disliked. It was how my parents prepared it that I disliked. And the, and, you know, the, the general chewiness of it. So bit by bit, the wife got me introduced to steaks and to good steaks and to good steaks done properly. And so now I can go to someplace like Texas Roadhouse and enjoy a nice steak cooked medium rare and it's beautiful. And the steak last night was beautiful. It was really tasty. Uh, We usually get the filet because that's the most tender cut of meat. And that's what we got this time. Uh, and, and this seems to be a good kind of, you know, modest steakhouse. Um, you know, kind of in the $20 range for, a, for an entree, you know. Um, 
kind of like Outback, although the Outback that's right by our house, um, they have service problems, so we're kind of boycotting them, but we're sitting there eating this filet last night, and I'm like, I think I like Texas Roadhouse's filet better. Um, and the wife likes the rolls better, so I think that's kind of our go-to place of choice now for, for steaks. Uh, it, you know, for, for, for a, you know, a, a, a modest price dinner. Now, we did fall into, at some point, well, you know, the wife had heard about it. She wanted to try it out. Ruth's Chris Steakhouses. And those are an epiphany. Those are wondrous. Those are prime grade steaks. Whereas you go to Texas Roadhouse or Outback, whatever, you get choice. Which is just a slightly lower grade than prime. And that stuff, and we usually get the filet there as well, but that melts in your mouth. It is spectacularly you know, prepared uh, a steak. Love it, love it, love it. Um, so yeah, I, I, it took me. It took her a while. It took, it took a few years. And then we have, but she got me on the steak bandwagon. So now a good steak dinner is. Is something I appreciate. I think she could probably eat it every week. I, I don't, you know, if if we went to some place that had where we had steaks, and then if we were to go someplace else next week, um, and they also had steaks, I would probably get something else on the menu. But uh, but yeah, a good steak dinner is is very nice, very nice indeed. Now for roast, it took a lot longer. For roasts, because a lot of roasts, you know, the meat can't, does tend to be kind of stringy and chewy. Um, my favorite part of the roast are are the vegetables, the potatoes, and the carrots. Traditionally, they get cooked along with the meat, so they get steeped in those beef juices. And oh, I can, especially the carrots, I could just sit there and just eat a big plate of those by themselves, but I have gotten to the point where I, I don't mind, um, I don't mind roast and I can actually enjoy it. I, if I still get a piece of meat that's a little bit on the tough side, I, I will tend to eat a modest amount of it, of the meat, and, and not probably like as much as I would eat if it was a steak. Uh, in a traditional setting, but it's something I've come to appreciate and, and, you know, don't mind occasionally. We occasionally do a roast. Probably, once again, something the wife could probably eat a lot, lot more often. It's not something I would ever pay to order at a restaurant, I don't think. You know, I, I never go, oh man, I'm feeling like a roast. <laughs> So that much of, of my parents' legacy remains, or I guess in this case my mother's rep, about legacy. You see was on the cook for us. It, you know, I will eat it now, and a lot of times I will enjoy it. But it's not something I'm going to suggest eating. It's not something I'm going to order. It's, you know, so it's not something that I'm, I'm, I'm oh, goody, roast. Of course, then my, my, my wife introduced me to another meal that is actually based on something I've always liked, and that's hamburger. And uh, this little meal is called hamburger gravy, uh, which I believe the Army or the Armed Forces would call shit on a shingle. It's basically, although, I, you know, that might be with chip beef as opposed to hamburger. Other than that, I think it's about the same. You know, it's you know brown hamburger that is combined with, uh, I believe, milk and and some flour and maybe some salt, and pepper. I'm not sure what else she puts into it. I think that's about it. And you know, it turns into this turns into this gravy um, with meat. You know, slate gray gravy. Yeah, good stuff. Not my favorite meal. The wife and the daughter love it. Um, but, and we have it occasionally. The thing I like about it is we usually make mashed potatoes when we have it. So I usually have some. And I'll pick it on the mashed potatoes. 
this is what I'll do because I love me some mashed potatoes. Uh, so yeah, I mean that happens occasionally. If I had to rank them, I probably would rank hamburger gravy above the roast. I think. I think. But yeah, so that's kind of my tumultuous, tumultuous. I gotta stop saying that. Uh, <laughs> that's my history of beef. It hasn't always been uh, uh, moving along, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> But that's what I thought I'd talk about for today. I will be back on the road tomorrow. I'll be talking to you then. So, be seeing you.